After finishing the last video, the first thing I did was print a new volume with tighter tolerances with the goal of improving the compressor's static pressure. I also did some work on the Arduino. With the help of a good friend, I overhauled the way the Arduino interprets sensor data. It now shows a 10 reading average for both thrust and pressure instead of the raw sensor data that we were displaying previously. We are now observing the engine's overall performance rather than the inconsistent peaks that might potentially be throwing off our data. The Arduino still displays our maximum thrust and now pressure as well. However, I haven't quite gotten the pressure all straightened out because it's just showing 28 PSI. And I can guarantee you, the engine is not producing 28 PSI. I then cut my engine in half. This allowed me to prepare and weld up eight individual flange pieces into two flange rings to hold our two engine halves together with machine screws. Now, why would I chop my beloved engine in half? Because we need access to the fuel nozzle. When I first built the engine, I used a 0.4 millimeter 3D printing nozzle as my gas nozzle. I did this because it's cheap, easy, and effective. So naturally, when designing my kerosene nozzle, I used the same thing. Now there's only one problem. If you squirt fluid through a stock 3D printer nozzle, all you get is a very tight jet. Meaning that instead of combusting, it would turn our engine into a kerosene spewing super soaker. Which granted, sounds like a great time, but it's not what we're going for. Instead I came up with a cheeky solution that makes our nozzle spray a fine mist. The key is to create a vortex inside the nozzle prior to expulsion. The vortex imparts an angular momentum to our stream, causing the stream to expand radially outwards as it leaves the nozzle, rather than staying in a tight jet. I was able to achieve this by boring out the printer nozzle to an eighth of an inch, then preparing an eighth of an inch insert that just press fits into the nozzle, and then filing a spiral groove into the insert. The spiral is what gives the fluid its rotational energy. And ta-da! We have a working spray nozzle. With enough pressure, the nozzle atomizes the fluid very effectively. So effectively, in fact, that I was able to test the nozzle with 50% isopropyl alcohol, which in my experience does not like staying lit. Now, all that being said, I have not had enough time to build the pump system to test these nozzles in the engine. I need the Arduino for that, and I haven't had enough time to sort it all out. Instead, I ran a quick test to see if our now bisected engine leaks, and to see if our compressor changes made any difference. The engine officially set a new thrust record at 485 grams. Now I did hit the same thrust prior to changing the compressor, so I'm not sure if the compressor really made that big of a difference. The last video received an unbelievable amount of comments, with two questions standing out in particular. Why am I not using a brushless motor, and are the printer files available for download? The answer to the first question is that I'm currently a broke college student and don't have the budget for a brushless motor and a speed controller. Otherwise, I would have ordered a brushless motor right off the bat. To answer the second question, I have made the compressor files available on my Patreon. It's an all-inclusive file that has all of the parts and hardware that I used in the build listed. This, sir, to kill two birds with one stone, getting you guys access to the files for the price of a coffee, and getting me the funding I need to keep pushing the limits of what this channel can do. Next video, we're actually testing out our new nozzles in our engine. I'll see you then.